In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about Effector. This plugin has 12 different effects and you can get all sorts of crazy sounds with it. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So Effector is a really cool plugin. It comes with all versions of FL Studio from Fruity Edition on. So if you own a licensed FL Studio, it doesn't matter what type, you'll have access to this plugin. And one of the things I really like about this plugin is that it's just really easy to get in here and just kind of experiment with and have fun with. Uh, but once you really understand how this plugin works and its full potential, I think you'll realize how amazing this plugin actually can be. So let's get straight into it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about all 12 of these effects and we're gonna actually go like kind of behind the hood of this plugin and explain a little bit about what each one of these effects is actually doing now this plugin only allows you to play one effect at a time so what that means is if you want to do multiple effects with an effector you're gonna to have to load multiple instances of this plugin and basically stack them in order to get that all right so by default this is what our effector looks like when we load it onto something and you may notice that this red light is on the bypass what this means is that when we first load this plugin up it's actually bypassing the plugin. So we're not going to be getting any actual effector going on to whatever we just loaded this onto. In our case, I just created this little simple beat to hopefully illustrate what this plugin can do. Sounds like this. And you may notice that as we click on the graph, the bypass light actually goes off, but then the second that we release it, it comes back on. So we can click and we can kind of listen to what we have going on here. So if we want, we can just go ahead and turn the bypass off for now. And you may notice up here at the very top, we have our gain knobs. This is our input gain and this is our output gain. And our input gain controls the signal going into the plugin. Our output gain controls the signal going out of the plugin after it's already been affected. So this is definitely going to uh, come in handy to know about, especially when it comes to like distortion and some of these other effects, which are going to make things really loud. So as we move our mouse along the graph here, you may notice that over here, we're actually moving the X Y parameter. So if we go all the way down to here, this is basically zero where both of these are far left and we can control these individually like this, or we can do it on the graph, kind of how I've been doing it. Each one of these parameters is going to control something completely different depending on what effect we're using at the time. So we're going to get into all that in a second. Uh, we also have the dry wet knob down here. And basically what this does is allows us to merge the wet and the dry signal. Uh, if we turn it all the way to the left, it's essentially the same thing as bypassing the plugin. So we can leave that all the way to the right for now. Now over here, we have our X mod and Y mod and these are linked to our X and Y parameters. And basically this is just an LFO. So we have the ability to switch between these different wave shapes. We have a sine wave, sawtooth and square waveform, which is pretty standard for most LFOs. We also have a tempo knob down here and this basically controls the speed of the LFO. And we also have these switches here, which pretty much does the same thing. So we're gonna get into all this stuff like more specifically as we go through the effects, but I just kind of wanted to give you a, a brief overview of all the parameters of this plugin. All right, so let's move on to our distortion. And basically the way distortion works in this plugin is our X parameter going this way controls the amount of distortion. Our Y parameter going this way controls the tone of the distortion. So I went ahead and turned the gain knob way down because I don't want to blast your guys ears off. Let's take a listen. And now as we change the tone, So unfortunately, distortion is not the best for demonstrating what the LFO can do. So we'll take a look at that in the lo-fi section, which we're going to do next. All right, so let's move on to our lo-fi option. Our lo-fi effect is basically just a bit crusher and our X parameter is going to control the sample rate reduction amount. And our Y parameter is just a low pass filter. So this is going to control the uh, frequency of that low pass filter. So let's take a listen to this. So you can hear how uh, those two things sort of interact with each other. And this is where we can actually start utilizing our LFO. So as I mentioned before, our X and our Y knobs here are linked to our X and Y parameters over here. So we can start experimenting with this. First of all, I'm gonna set this to eight to one. So we're getting a slower LFO rate. Let me bring this all the way up. Thank you. 
you can hear the LFO moving with the bit crusher effect to uh, get some movement and, and kind of make some cool stuff. And then we can experiment with the, the wave shapes as well. So like a square wave is going to give it more of uh, that shape, I guess. So... Cool. So hopefully you get a good illustration of how cool the LFO can be with this plugin and kind of what you guys can do with this. All right, so let's move on to our flanger. So for our flanger, our X parameter is going to control the depth of it. And then our Y parameter is going to control the feedback uh, or kind of the resonance of it. So it's going to sound like this. You can hear how that feedback or that resonance kind of goes in when you mess with the Y parameter. So let's just kind of set this somewhere. So again, it's the same thing. You can mess with the LFO, you can experiment with the timing and just come up with some pretty cool stuff. So our phaser is the same as the flanger in terms of the X and the Y parameter. The X parameter controls the depth, the Y parameter controls the feedback. However, it's a phaser instead of a flanger, so obviously it's gonna sound a little bit different. You can really hear the feedback up there. All right, so the filter effect on Effector works slightly differently. Basically, we have our X parameter, which when we move left of a certain point, low passes all the frequencies. And when we move right of a certain point, it high passes all the frequencies. So I've sort of found the center point. It's right around here. It's pretty close. So if I go to the left, You can hear it low passing all the frequencies and to the right it's high passing. Now, as I move the Y parameter, it's gonna add resonance onto it. Kind of sounds similar to the Fruity Free filter. I don't know if you guys have ever messed with that. So I'm curious to see what we can come up with experimenting with the LFO on this one. Okay, so for our delay, our X parameter controls the uh, feedback amount of the delay or basically how loud the delay is. And then our Y parameter filters out frequencies. So when we go all the way up to the top of the Y parameter, we're filtering out a bunch of the lower frequencies. And when we go down, we're including those. Uh, now we can also change the rate of the delay with these buttons here. So right now I have a four to one. So hopefully you can hear as uh, how I swept up there, uh, it filtered out all those lower frequencies and just got basically the higher information going through there. All right, so for our reverb section of the effector, our X parameter controls the feedback of the reverb and then our Y parameter controls the wet amount of it, so. All right, so let's move on to our stereo mode. Our X parameter is gonna control panning. So over here, we're hard panned right. Over here, we're hard panned left. And then our Y parameter kind of controls whether or not it sounds farther or closer away. Now, it's kind of hard to tell when you're in the center, but as you get farther away, you can definitely hear the difference between the stereo sounding closer or farther away. So this is actually pretty cool. Let's take a listen. Okay, so this is a trance effect or kind of like a gate, or you could think of it as like a side chain. Our X parameter controls the release time and our Y parameter controls how much is like actually dropping out or how much of the gate effect we're getting. So for example, up here, 
we're not getting anything down here. And you can kind of hear the, the release time being affected too with the X parameter as well. Okay, so our grain effect is going to be sort of like a re-triggering effect. And this is gonna be good for like buildups and stuff like that potentially. We don't actually have an X or a Y parameter for this effect. It runs off of um, these different speeds. So I'll kind of illustrate that. So that's basically how the plugin works. Okay, so for our vocal effect here, so basically how this works is our X parameter is a formant filter. This controls the vowel sound. And then our Y parameter is the throat size. So on this particular drum loop, um, it's gonna sound like this to kind of automate it. But if we were to put this on like some basses or something, you know, we could get some pretty crazy sounds. All right, so our ring effect is simply ring modulation. Our Y parameter doesn't do anything at all, but our X parameter controls the modulator frequency. And essentially what's happening here is we are multiplying whatever original signal that we're putting this ring modulation on by a sine wave. So it's gonna sound like this. So we can get some like crazy computer sounds out of that. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. I did recently release a video, which if you like this video, I think you'll also like that one. Uh, it's basically five sound design techniques to help you get a better production, better mix. So I'll be sure to leave that on the screen now if you guys wanna check that out and I'll see you in the next video.